people who I started writing with, most of them sort of like, of who I thought were the best in my class and in my school, they kind of like quit, sort of like when we became like 15, something like that. And that's actually when I started really writing. That's when I was like, I think I had been like just soaking information until that and like thinking what to do. And uh, when I found more about graffiti, when I had been to Stockholm with my mother, like on a day trip and just to take pictures on the subway lines and seeing stuff by Dizzy and Siggy and seeing stuff by AK and News, I was like, wow, like there's a whole new world out there. Like, and then I saw like Sprague and Art and I realized, hey, it's not only like some distant place like New York that seemed like kind of like a so far, far away, but it, it's also like graffiti in Denmark and somewhere else in Europe. So it, I was kind of like, hey, I want to find out more about that. And uh, then we started like a little bit getting into more serious, sort of like with my friends. Like, you know, I think the big scene in Helsinki died out in sort of like late 80s and in the early 90s. It was like more like committed people who were like, okay, we're going to start doing this for real. And uh, we started to find out how to paint trains and how to do everything a bit more professionally and like you know started to see contact see contacts sort of like outside of Finland like first sort of like trading photos with through some uh, hip-hop magazine in England and then we eventually met people from Stockholm like uh, Track and uh, Post and Nug and Amen and Chaos so it became like a link so we first started to frequently go to Stockholm and they came here and we started to share information obviously like they were so far ahead of us so it was kind of like like meeting Nug and those guys was like hey like they were on a on completely on a different level than we were and we thought like we were somehow a little bit professional in graffiti but they just like we realized like you know we were in like sort of like in a neighborhood league while they were like sort of like in world champions so uh, we learned a lot from them and then we started traveling together like going into rails and it was amazing uh, to build that European network back then you went to one city and like met some guy who turned out to be a cool guy and took you out painting and showed the city and uh, maybe from him you got the next phone number to the next city and then you met another guy and like we built up this network sort of like in early 90s sort of like maybe trying to copy what like you no know, crime time gifts kings had done like a few years earlier but i think we sort of like i don't know we did it our way and uh, that net network still is alive today and like a lot of the people who i met those years in the early 90s are still my friends and the great thing about them is a lot of them still write and, and a lot of them also bit like a, amazing careers in art. In the early 2000s I almost was thinking of like giving up, up writing. I was like, hey, what's next? It was like there was like a new group of kids or not kids, but there was like a new guys who were doing a lot more stuff than I was doing and I was like I had finished my art studies and I started like a creative job and I was like hey so what's next how do I I really had to somehow figure how to fit graffiti into my sort of like in a way new life like you know coming into working world and like you know and also to having like a creative job because you know before like graffiti was the creative output and now I had like a creative job and I was like okay so if I do like creative stuff like or if I do design or for eight or twelve hours a day like you know do I still have to do that in my free time so it took some time and then I but I think around early 2000s I had to reinvent my graffiti and uh, sort of like figured out yeah it's I really need to do it it's it's that is my creative output and my creative work is just work it's like it's almost like cleaning or whatever you know it's just the work you know? and uh, my real creativity is in graffiti and uh, 
I think I've done my best stuff after that and it's I really have a lot of ambition in graffiti not as to compete to, against anyone I'm, I don't care about that the only person who I compete against is myself the older I, I've come like you know the more important the graffiti comes to me because I think it's sort of like it is quite sort of like it's honest thing I don't make any money with it I don't uh, it's quite pure thing and uh, I don't think how many pure things there are in sort of like Western lifestyle left anymore I think graffiti is one of the last ones I went through a lot of names and like when we started doing trains here in the early 90s I kind of like Sometimes I did a character, sometimes I did a strange name, so it was more like just for the action and then I wanted like, hey, I really need to settle down with a nice name. So uh, at one Christmas, I, I think it was Christmas 1990, I thought, yeah, okay, I had just bought like a, a shaving foam called Edge by Gillette and I was quite into U2 at the time as well, so I was like, oh, I start to write Edge. And then I find out that around the same time somebody else was writing Edge in Stockholm, so I was like, uh, maybe that's not so cool. I wanted to have a three letter name for panels, because I just thought like all the great pen panels are done with three letters. So I did, I think I did one EDG, and that just sounded stupid, so I just did one X, like one panel, and I was like, hey, that's quite a nice name to write for a while, but I guess then that's just stuck and it's like, I don't know, I think it's, it's just nice letters and it's, I could have chosen a better name, but you know, that's it, what it is.